You know, what's funny, when things get chaotic, we all have the natural tendency to overreact. And that overreaction doesn't lead to just you sitting down and actually thinking about it in the midst of chaos. What happens is that we tend to overreact. In other words, we tend to do too much, right? Rather, rather than being quiet, we talk too much. Rather than standing still, we move too much. And in that moment, we make mistakes. The chaos, the intensity of the moment of uncertainty causes us and compels us to make mistakes. And so a lot of all of this, when it comes to life and dating, it's not really about the strategy that you know. It's really about developing a presence of mind, learning to keep calm. And how do you develop that presence of mind? You develop that presence of mind not through just exposing yourself to conflict, but literally sometimes just retreating and pulling away. Because a lot of people said, Father Alex, I wish I knew your strategies back then. I think I would have never made a mistake. The truth is, you would you could have known all the strategies that I teach. The problem is that when you when, when your emotions are too intense, when you when 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 you can't think straight, no strategy that you apply will work. So let me tell you. Let me show you why. It's not about what you know but about having that presence of mind because once you develop that presence of mind, once you pull away, because pulling away gives you space to think. Pulling away is a disengagement strategy. It, that's, it's, it's a strategy so that not to learn strategies, but to see things from a different perspective. And at the same time, it changes the way a person perceives you. But let's listen to this quick. Amidst the turmoil of events, do not lose your presence of mind. The counterbalance strategy. In the heat of battle, the mind tends to lose its balance. Too many things confront you at the same time. Unexpected setbacks, doubts, and criticisms from your own allies. There's a danger of responding emotionally with fear, depression, or frustration. And this is why it's important to pull away. Because it'll maintain your presence of mind pristine. What people want to do... If you're t talking to someone, what they want to do is to get you emotional. You know that emotional state when you like someone? When you just start making mistakes after mistakes after mistake, and for some reason you cannot stop? You, you there's, there's something compelling you to make mistakes? It's because you have lost your, your balance. It is vital to keep your presence of mind, maintaining your mental powers, whatever the circumstances. You must actively resist the emotional pull of the moment, staying decisive, confident, and aggressive no matter what hits you. Make the mind tougher by exposing it to adversity. Learn to detach yourself from the chaos of the battlefield. Let others lose their heads. Your presence of mind will steer you clear of their influence and keep you on course. So rather than you lose presence of mind, I'm going to teach you how to get them to lose their presence of mind. Well, first of all, right um the first thing that happens when you pull away obviously you develop you you gain a different perspective but that's for the later part of the video you the first thing that happens is that respect goes up respect goes up right you could be in the most difficult situation where you feel like the person may not like you but you gotta understand the foundation to any attraction is respect i'm sorry because i rather have respect and not like me rather than you like me and not respect me um, the, unfortunately, the foundation to all human relationships is trust and respect. So once you pull away, you create that. Let me show you why. Use absence to increase respect and honor. Judgment. Judgment. Too much circulation makes the price go down. The more you are seen and heard from, the more common you appear. And usually, by be appearing more common, you'll notice you just... They get, they, they get less reactive around you, right? There's not an emotional response to your presence. What we want is consistent emotional responses. So by pulling away and removing your presence, you increase the emotional response when they're in your presence. You, become, you appear more unpredictable. You appear larger than life. And any flaws and any mistakes that you could have done can easily be forgiven and forgotten simply because you pulled away. 
If you are already established in a group, temporary withdrawal from it will make you more talked about, even more admired. You must learn when to leave, create value through scarcity. Rather than create value through your actions, you just create value through your absence. And a lot of people just don't want to do this simply because it comes, you have to control yourself. And a lot of people don't, are so used to getting attention that this strategy goes against their, their it goes against their ego. Their, their, their ego is too fragile to actually be able to apply this properly. Observance of the law. So, just like, just like, in love, a person's absence enhances their presence, but after a while, it diminishes once you know how much the person likes you. The imagination has no space to roam. And you gotta understand, the larger than life image, the the image that people see you when they're in love with you is really created by the imagination. It's not really because they're in touch with reality. Um, so whenever you're in love, you are naturally in a space that's not real. And that's normal and that's healthy, right? Because we need a reason to, to love people. Like we, at the end of the day, people are not that lovable, right? So the imagination has no space to roam. Remember, love never dies of a starvation, but often indigestion. Don't let them see you or treat you like anybody else. Force them to respect you by threatening to leave or using absence. You got to understand, respect comes with tension. And that tension is the fear of seeing your dark side. It's a fear of you leaving them. It's a fear of seeing your angry side. If, if there is no threat of you inflicting some form of pain, and that's, again, form of pain means reprimanded, firing, leaving, uh, um, temporarily breaking up, or even just the fear of seeing your seeing you when you're mad, not like abusively, but like, like yo, what the fuck are you doing? Like, hey, like you, you, you're not doing, you keep being late. Like, oh my God, Father Alex is abusive, <laughs> right? But that fear of seeing your bad side when you're usually happy creates tension where they'll behave in a way that will, in a, in the, they'll try to prevent that dark side from coming out. Don't let them see you or treat you like anybody else. Force them to respect you by threatening to leave or using absence. Create a pattern of presence and absence. It's like a death before death type of effect. Right, so that's one thing. Is that the respect goes up. The next thing is that you gain perspective. Re so, this perspective is the perspective that gets narrowed when when you're consistently seeing someone and you're overvaluing their worth, or you're falling in love too fast, right? Or you're afraid of losing them. All of those things is not a problem of your value. It's really a problem of perspective, right? And this is why this is so powerful. This is from the 33 Strategies of War by Robert Greene. 11. Trade space for time. The non-engagement strategy. Retreat in the face of a strong enemy is a sign not of weakness, but of strength. By resisting the temptation to respond to an aggressor, you buy yourself valuable time, time to recover, to think, to gain perspective. And this is usually what you don't want to do, right? Usually when you're in a situation or conflict with a partner, you really don't want to disengage. All of your instincts are telling you to engage. And what I'm telling you is to go against your, those instincts. Disengage. See what could happen. You'd be surprised how much power and leverage you gain by just pulling away to, in order to change your perspective. Let your enemies advance. Time is more important than space. By refusing to fight, you infuriate them and feed their arrogance. They will soon overextend themselves and start making mistakes. Time will reveal them as rash and you as wise. Sometimes you can accomplish most by doing nothing. Yeah, and, and, and you don't, you see, a lot of people just don't understand that most people, most people's confidence is really just a front. It's really just a front. And a lot of the times, pulling away is when you hit them where, where it hurts. Right? Um, a, lot of, a, a, lot of, a lot of us buy into the appearance that the people who we're dealing with are truly confident and truly have a strong sense of self. Everyone acts like they don't care, but they do. And the thing that people really care the most 
is validation from the opposite sex. That social validation, of course, but but most importantly, validation from the opposite sex. And sometimes them having you in a state of anxiety where you don't want to lose them, them knowing that you that you will never leave them, knowing that you love them, sometimes is validation in and of itself. But they hide that. They hide that they feed on that validation. And you expose that insecurity. You expose those true feelings by leaving, by pulling away. And what and you remove that validation, which then if you wait long enough, you'll notice that this person that seemed ultra confident all of a sudden is 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 begging to have your attention. That doesn't happen often, but if you're actually with them and you're going out with them consistently, this is most people. The thing is, most people just really try hard to hide that. They really ha- try hard to hide how how dependent they are of you. And I don't. And unfortunately, if they don't show you that they're, they're depending on you when you leave, then they're not meant for you, people. It's just that simple. This is the, this is the part that I want you guys to understand: is that it not working means it's working because it's revealing what's going on inside. And what people try hardest, the most, is to hide how they feel. Hit them where it hurts. The center of gravity strategy. Everyone has a source of power on which he or she depends. When you look at your rivals, search below the surface for that source, the center of gravity that holds the entire structure together. That center can be their wealth, their popularity, a key position. And sometimes that center is literally the confidence you imbued in people because of your unwillingness to leave, your your willingness to take the bullshit. Like literally, sometimes we create a center of gravity because of our in, because of our excessive validation and sometimes literally leaving you decenter them you hit them where it hurts a winning strategy hitting them there will inflict disproportionate pain find what the other side most cherishes and protects that is where you must strike right and usually it's just their emotions Getting them to become emotional, getting them to become impatient, getting them to to imagine the worst, and that usually just comes down to from you just just subtly pulling away. It's just as simple as that. Their brain will do the dirty work for them. So you gain perspective. Retreat in the face of a strong enemy is a sign not of weakness but of strength. By resisting the temptation to respond to an aggressor, you buy yourself valuable time, time to recover, to think, to gain perspective. Let your enemies advance. Time is more important than space. By refusing to fight, you infuriate them and feed their arrogance. They will soon overextend themselves and start making mistakes. Time will reveal them as rash and you as wise. Sometimes you can accomplish most. You gain perspective because retreat allows you to find yourself and remove yourself from the inf- from the infecting influence of other people, right? Why? Because some people want you to be there. They want to put pressure on you so that you don't think straight. They wanna, they wanna almost like a blitzkrieg strategy, where they put so much pressure on you, you 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 lose the ability to think straight, and then you make mistakes. Which reveals your strategy, and you t- and and when you make those types of mistakes, you make even more mistakes. Why? Because we we start to respond. We usually respond to things routinely and mechanically instead of responding to the instead of understanding their differences. So rather than responding to the actual moment, we respond to our fantasies because by them putting pressure on us, um, we 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 collapse on the inside and we and we start projecting our fears. Right? We sort of it's like a boxer a boxer who's told to box right, but as soon as things get chaotic, they they forget the strategy they were applying and they start boxing out of instinct. And this is what usually happens. And when this happens, you just go back to your habits and you literally start to make the mistakes you promised not to make. And, and you say to yourself, why do I keep doing this? Why do I keep making these, t- these same mistakes? It's because you're not allowing yourself time to retreat. You're not giving yourself proper distance from, from that person or from the group so that you could actually start to see the difference between this situation and the other ones so that you don't respond mechanically. And we do that because we're humans. We, we get infected by the, uh, the other person's mood and the other person's tempo. Right. So we they might be going too fast for us. And because we sort of don't know how to stop it, we we go at their pace and we make mistakes. Sometimes it's better to just stop everything, slow things the fuck down and say, hey, look, I'm going to take a step back and you just start pulling away. 
Because the next thing will happen is that they become the aggressor, right? And the reason why it's important for them to become the aggressor is because you want them to come to you Law instead. Law 8. Make other people come to you. Use bait if necessary. Judgment. When you force the other person to act, you are the one in control. It is always better to make your opponent come to you, abandoning his own plans in the process. Lure him with fabulous gains, then attack. Right. You so, hold the cards. So by you getting them to become the aggressor because you stop doing something, you literally stop acting, and you get in a defensive position, which will force them to go come to you. Your enemy wants you to react. They start to overextend themselves and make mistakes because you're not reacting to them. They reveal their emotions, they reveal their intentions, and you pretty much gain leverage because of that. Remember, in life, what could go wrong will go wrong. And, and in, in war, what could go wrong will go wrong. You create that type of chaos where they lose their all of their strategies and act out of emotion exactly what you want. So... Then, because of that, because you're creating that type of chaos, they're getting aggressive, they're getting impatient, what could go wrong will go wrong. And usually it's in your favor. <laughs> right? You, you get them to lose control. Your idea of power is wrong. You have mistaken aggressive action for effective action. And most often, the most effective action is to stay back, keep calm, and let others be frustrated by the traps you lay for them playing for long-term power rather than quick victory. Remember, the essence of power is the ability to keep the initiative, to get others to react to your moves, to keep your opponent and those around you on the defensive. When you make other people come to you, you suddenly become the one controlling the situation, and the one who has control has power. And if they don't come to you, when you're, in the, when you're pulling away, then... You don't want that. Fuck that. Nah, I'm good. You, you, you really are so. You really are that happy without me. Then I don't want to be with you. And they get, and and that is the ultimate leverage. You just have to be okay with that reality and not try to change it when you get the results that you don't want. <coughs> if you apply this, your mind will be in in a supreme state of peace when it comes to dealing with the opposite sex. When it comes to dealing with people in your life. And you may not get the results that you want, but, but listen, you're going to have that peace of mind that allows you to become more flexible in the midst of chaos, that allows you to think straight and to, and to, cre and to create strategies that actually hit their mark because you're, you're, you're in a state of, 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 of calm and tranquility and you're causing them to lose their focus and their, and their emotions. And that will always bring you leverage. And that's the power of pulling away people. These are the three amazing things that will happen when you pull away. There were you will increase your honor and respect. You will gain perspective, and you make them the aggressor, which gives you power. And that's how you do it, people. All right. Anyways, if you guys want to learn more about this, you can purchase my courses under the description down below where I talk about this. If you guys want to work with me one on one, go to my <coughs> go to myfutraction.org, and I'll see you guys there. Take care. All right, guys, we're going to have a brief intermission so that I can tell you guys about our new bundle that we're doing where you guys can purchase all of my courses and get it at a discount. So this bundle is pretty much um, the bundle where you could just buy all of my courses. You could buy um, Nice Guy, which is a training course on how to come across more assertive, how to come across more confident, um, how to not give off Nice Guy vibes. You guys can get access to Dark Game, um, which is my full dating course on how to meet women in different scenarios, how to attract women, how to make sure you don't come across as creepy, and essentially how to act like a man and not act like a doofus, to be quite honest with you. Um, and you get all of these bonuses, which is the bonuses of Dark Game, the bonuses of Practical Mastery, uh, which is about how to master a skill, Social Mastery, which is how to master your social life, and the Laws of Human Nature, which is a book club video that I had dissecting robert green's book you, all of this is naturally at around 238 200 no naturally is at 346 dollars but you guys can purchase this bundle 
and get it at what what's the price again uh get it at um two 238 pretty much um so you guys can purchase it right now um it's a money money back 30 day money back guarantee uh it's a good way to rather than just buying them individually and paying extra you guys can just purchase everything at a discount price now the only thing i don't like is the fact that i'm giving you a lot of information at the same time that makes me kind of scared because a lot of times people don't do the things that I teach when I, when you get too much information. But I've gotten too many requests to do this. So I'm just satisfying you guys purchase it right now by clicking on the description down below where it says purchase the bundle. All right, let's continue with the video.